Hey, buddy. <laughs> Mom, are you filming this? I am. Oh, you got her? Pet her! That's Violet. Oh, sweet Violet. Violet is the one that I want to be my goat. You want her to be your goat? Well, remember, if you want to have a goat, you have to take care of the goats. Okay, people who take care of the goats get to have their own goats, okay? Okay, I know my guess bring it to the place where she can eat because turns out Violet is the first one that learned how to eat. Right, well, in order to be... Like she was hey, eating hay once. Listen to me, okay? In order to be the one who's taking care of her, you have to bring the food, not just carry her to the food. You have to go get the food from next door and bring it. What? You have to come out and get dressed and do chores with us. Well... Oh, and there's Verity. Hey, Verity. Can y'all remind me? Hey, Verity. Yeah. Can y'all remind me? Yes, I can remind you. That's Verity. And then here's Maggie's babies. Look how much they look like Maggie. I like, I like to call that one Moo Cow. I call Moo Cow. That no, it's Cow. Okay, okay, but I'm going to tell you what their real names are, okay? Y'all okay. ready to learn their real names? Three, two, one. Now. This one with the, the white spot on her head is Cora. Finally. <laughs> finally, we got a Cora. Yes, finally. And then yeah. this one with the, this one that looks so much like Maggie, Maggie Jr. Mm -hmm. That one is Edith. 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 Okay. And I'm then there's there's Lady Mary. Yeah, I know Lady Mary. Oh, oh she does Daddy. like you. That's why I want her to be my ghost. Yeah. Well, you got to take care of her. Okay. That's cute. <laughs> that well, I'll cute. start. I'll start helping with the ghost if this one's gonna be my ghost. Good morning, you guys. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Oh, there's Mary. Camera! camera I love cameras! <laughs> I'm on TV! <laughs> no! Good morning, you guys. We're having some goat time. Let me see him. Oh, he's getting so big. He's getting so big and he's so handsome, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, he's starting to get his horns. Is he yeah, getting? Yeah, we're gonna get him disbutted. Wait, he's not gonna get horns? No, we're gonna get him disbutted because it makes them safer, and also uh, most people who keep dairy goats they like to keep them disbutted, and so we're we're gonna go ahead and do that. It stinks for a little bit, but it's better for them in the long run. Mm -hmm. Like right now, Clover has that big growth on her belly because she got jabbed in the belly by the um, Nigerian dwarf's horns. So we're gonna get all the horns off of our our goats. Well, I am back home. I was out of town this weekend. Um, had a really lovely time, but now I'm back to my farm and all my goaties. It is baby overload out in the goat yard this morning. I've been enjoying them. So we've just put down an extra layer of straw out here in the barn. And Winona here is definitely getting closer to kidding. Uh, she's looking really wide. Her udder's filling out. She's not super close yet. Like, she still has ligaments, but I know we're close. And it's pretty cold outside right now. It's just a little bit above freezing. But um, this coming weekend, it's going to be very cold, significantly below Stop freezing. It. It. Hey, it's okay. They headbutt each other. That's how they work it out, man. We cannot get too involved in these goats' relational affairs. They got to work it out in the goat way. So um, it's gonna be really cold this coming weekend. I'm really hoping that Winona is not that close uh, because there are a few days that it's not even gonna be anywhere near getting above freezing and lows in the single digits, which is roughly like negative 12 or 13 Celsius. So I mean, it's like really, that's, that's pretty cold for an animal to be giving birth in, especially in a big open non-insulated barn. We have done some modifications here to make up for the fact that our new barn didn't come in time for all of this and for the most part it's okay but it uh well it's already been a little costly so anna here gave birth while i was out of town and i actually just got done milking her because while i was gone she had the baby maya found her already the baby was already born. It was a little buckling. When he found her, she had already washed him off. She got him dried off, I mean. And he saw the baby eating, and he thought everything was fine. Of course, it was really cold outside. It was sleeting, and, um, you know, everything was dry, and it was in the, the warm stall. And then he came back out a little bit later, and the baby was unresponsive. So 
Jeremiah worked really hard, uh, got him warmed back up. If you ever find a baby goat and it's cold and unresponsive and still alive, get it warmed back up. Um, because you cannot, like a lot of times you just get them warmed back up and they snap right back. Um, and I have brought kid, goat kids back like that before, but this one, he, he couldn't hold his body heat for whatever reason. I don't know if something was wrong with him. I don't know if that's why, like if she just rejected him because there was something wrong with him. I don't know if he got too cold in that window. And it's hard to say. Um, I, I know I was walking Jeremiah through it on the phone and he did everything that he could, but we ended up losing that kid. So now I have Anna in milk with no kid. And that just means that she has to be milked twice a day, morning and night. And we try to keep it on a 12 hour rotation. So um, I'm milking her at about seven in the morning and then seven in the evening. I might bump it back a little bit and do eight and eight so I can milk her after dinner is done for us. What? Oh, I mean, you must Remember us milking together? Yeah, dude. Farm boy and mama milking. Farm boy and mama milking? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm wanting, I'm wanting to be able to get cow milk. I would love to get cow milk. You know, I milked a cow yesterday. You what? You I, got the milk? I didn't bring the milk home, no. Huh? I milked a cow yesterday. <laughs> get ice cream! Yeah, I want a cow so we can get ice cream too. Who made ice cream? Okay, let's hey, can somebody run this in and put it on the kitchen counter for me so Daddy can strain it? I want to go back and check the greenhouse. I'll be out back if you guys want to come meet me. Can I show Lily the Did you hold see hold that? That's her. Um, hold on. What's the little twisty wine under? That is her umbilical cord stump that's all dried up and healed. She's so cute, huh? Little Violet. What is that? Little Violet. I know. What's an umbilical cord stump? What's an umbilical cord stump? You know how you have a belly button? Yeah. Can I see it? Ooh, cold belly. Okay, so when you were in my belly, your umbilical cord, there was a cord that connected you to essentially what my body grew to feed you and it was connected right there. That's why you have a belly button. That's where your umbilical cord was when and you were in my belly. Why did they have dirt? Because they're, they had cords that connected them in their mommy too so why? that they could have all the food and the nutrients they needed to grow in their mommy's belly. Then why are they still there? Be um, when you were born, you had a little thing that hung off and it dried up and fell off too. Well, why did it dirt fall off? Because they're still too little. They'll fall off really soon. You had yours for about a week did after you were born. Yeah, the bigger ones probably did. Part of the process, man. So the morning after I get home, I got home late last night. I am always so excited to go check out my farm, see how everything's doing. Of course, it's been well cared for in my absence. Sweet Maya was here. Hey, chickies. Good morning. Hey, guys, let's come look in here. I got my star already got eggs this morning. Oh, all our chickens are up here in this yard where they're prepping the next garden space. We've got our chick shawl up here and it holds all the ones we had left. I mentioned that we were having some predator issues and I'm not entirely sure what it was. It must have been something that was taking chickens in the day and taking them entirely. So since we put them over here, we haven't lost anymore. So I don't know if they were getting out of the yard and not being able to get back and then getting attacked in the night. Like if they were, I don't, I don't know exactly what was happening, but I just noticed our numbers were dwindling and there was like no sign of anything. Someone mentioned maybe, could it have been a human that was like snagging them? And that could be possible because that yard goes up to the road but I find it very unlikely. We did have a bunch of chickens stolen once in the night. That did happen, and that was definitely a human. That, but that's been years ago. I don't think that's what was happening. I think it was more likely a predator just because of how slow it was happening. It was just like, it wasn't a significant number at a time. But we moved them up here. The other thing is that area where they were was really muddy and up here is dry. And someone mentioned the other day that chickens won't lay when their feet are wet. And I find that very interesting because within a few days of putting them up here in the chick shawl, we had two dozen eggs in a day. So we're back in the egg business, which is really nice. It does look like, unfortunately, something has scratched up a bunch of my onions while I was gone. I'm not really sure what that was. The garlic looks good, but... Several of my onions are missing. You got that chicken, Ben? What's Rodette. her name? Rodette. Rodette. The, the, the gray you, one is. Do you know that she is called a splash cochin? Isn't she pretty? 
with her yeah. big fluffy pants. Mom, remember how we got to name most of the chickens here? Yep. Oh. Let's, hey, let's stop touching that fence. I know that it's off, but it's a bad habit to get in to touch it, okay? All right, fence is back on. I want to ask how we were keeping these chickens in this yard, and a few have gotten out, and that might have been what happened with my onions is something. I don't know. I don't know what that was, because I don't see a lot of scratch marks, but I don't know. Uh, just have to keep an eye on it. I had a few that were jumping from the top of this off, but their feathers are clipped, their wings are clipped, and then this electric fence is four foot tall. And so for the most part, that keeps them in. Occasionally you'll get like a really persistent one that like insists on getting out. But for the most part, they respect the electric fence. Oh, let's see how the high tunnel fared while I was gone. Looks pretty much the same. <laughs> hmm. Got some more growth in here. Uh, some of this stuff is still going to be cleaned out. This is really my focus this week is resetting these spaces and getting ready to reset them. I had mentioned before I left that I wanted to do some like fermenting and preserving of like the tur turnips and the rutabagas in here. A lot of the kale still looks really good and I'm still very like harvesting along the bottom of all these kale plants. I have a lot of it in here and that I'm just going to leave because I'll still keep harvesting off of that. A lot of the root vegetables, I'm going to go ahead and get them out and um, do some preserving, feed some to the pigs. I'll probably leave some of the smaller ones. I've already replanted like a next wave of root vegetables. And uh, I'm gonna amend these beds, adding in just a couple more inches of compost. I have enough room in them to do that and get ready for the next wave of stuff I'm gonna plant, which is largely going to be still cold weather stuff because it's February. We still have a good deal of cold weather left and I've got plenty of time to grow another round of cabbages and probably broccoli, uh, more root vegetables. I, I'll probably plant maybe a little bit more kale. I've got some more started. I have so much growing and it looks great. You can see here, I mean, there's just a lot of kale out here. I definitely wanna get more lettuce going. And then basically I'm trying to get everything in so I can harvest it by May, which is when I'm going to plant this full of my pepper transplants and my determinate tomatoes. Isn't it crazy how when you're gardening, you always have to be like looking forward to the next season. You have to, you have to have it in the back of your mind and planning for it so that you can do it the most effectively. But it's weird to me to be like accounting for planting tomatoes whenever I'm also accounting, like I'm accounting for planting tomatoes in the next season and, and timing everything right. And I'm also accounting for single digit freezes this weekend. In some part of the true gardener's mind, it's always spring, you know, like you're always kind of revolving around that reality of, of being ready and prepared for spring. If nothing else, just to mentally get you through the cold months where there's no, there's no real garden. At least all my onions up here look good. See, at first they start to look dead, but you can see there's new green growth on them and they'll start standing up and they'll look really good. All right, let's see how my seedlings did while I was gone. Oh, looks like they're just fine. And look, okay, I told you guys the other day how I had killed my celery, but look, we got a few survivors in here that look like they're gonna pull through. How cool is that? And a more new germination happening, so it wasn't a total loss after all. It's been so overcast and cold that it's actually it's even still pretty cold in here. It's at least above freezing in the greenhouse, but it's it's not warm. I'm actually, I was, I was thinking about going ahead and starting peppers out here, um, but I'm not gonna do that right now. I may start them inside under the grow light this week so I can go ahead and get them going. Normally I start my tomatoes February 15th, and then I've started doing my peppers before then. It's not so much necessary now that I wait to move them out. I learned finally the trick to having a better pepper year is don't move them out right after the frost passes. Wait three or four weeks until the nights are warming up because they just stunt real bad when they get cold. And so I think I'm just gonna start both at the same time, my peppers and tomatoes. And I've done those out in the greenhouse before, but it's gonna be so cold that I think I am gonna start them in under a grow light and then move them out here. First, I'll show you guys all that process and everything as well as more milking content in the morning. I know you guys love our chats while milking, uh, and that is something that's very special to me. I love sharing it with you. Bring my seedlings down here. 
and let's look at them. I think this is, I think it's called Dazzling Blue Kale and it is so uh, pretty. Got these really pretty uh, curly looking leaves and you can already see that blue coming in on them. It's got that purple. Oh, come on, focus camera. There we go. You can see the purple in there. I just think it's really neat how seedlings just from the beginning look really different. Maya was on the live video the other day and it was just him because I was gone. And he was like, oh, we don't have any seedlings. Because people were saying, how are the seedlings with Jess being gone? And he's like, oh, we don't have any seedlings. Everybody's like, yes, you do. They're in the greenhouse. Uh, I knew that they would be okay. I, I put them in a bottom water tray. They're still so small and that they don't need much. Um, the water lasts a while. And I also checked the forecast and I knew it wasn't gonna be like super sunny where the greenhouse would need to be open. So I didn't give him any instructions to take care of the seedlings. That's why he didn't know there were any out here. I went out to my friends, uh, the Rhodes this weekend to celebrate their new baby, but also to take some photos for a project that I had coming up, which you guys will know about a while down the road. As I um, am talking about something in this project about dairy animals on a homestead, and of course, I don't have any experience with having dairy cows. And I can tell you all about goats, and I love goats, and I think they're great for a homestead, but I didn't feel like it would be a really comprehensive talk about dairy animals, obviously, without talking about the family cow. And uh, the roads are the ones that I've learned a lot from, especially when it comes to cows, and I haven't had an opportunity to have cows myself yet, but I did get to milk one yesterday morning, and it was really, it was really enjoyable, and I am looking forward to that. Uh, that's one of the things when we move to a new property that we want to get a property that's more conducive to keeping a cow. I'll still keep goats because I love goats, um, and I like their milk for certain things, but being able to have a cow would be really awesome. I'm going to try to get some work done around here before it gets really cold and also recover from traveling because you know, I have to do that. I don't know about you. You know, I used to be able to make long trips and just like fling back into my regular routine without missing a beat, but I'm finding the older I get, the harder that that is to do. I'm like really feeling it the morning after getting home really late and you know trying to get back into my routine i was out milking this morning that's why i didn't shoot a video because i mean i was still like did i didn't have the sleep out of my eyes yet and i'm like golly this is a hard adjustment after traveling so i'm going to kind of take it a little easy today try to get some work done around the farm get ready for these cold temperatures but i'm really excited about the content i have coming up for you guys because we are we are stepping into springtime here on our homestead it's my favorite time of year is all the preparation and all the new life just spring forth. So thank you for hanging out with me this morning. I bless you. Until next time.